Saudi Arabia's 2023 economic plan would have been incomplete without the Jeddah Tower, a project that was started and abandoned nearly a decade ago. Now, ready as they'll ever be, the Saudis have broken ground on the Jeddah Tower for the second time. The tower is anticipated to reach new heights, figuratively and literally, by becoming the world's largest skyscraper. Why was it abandoned in the first place? What if those factors come back to haunt the project again? Jeddah Tower is back from the dead, and it's time to take a deeper look. What happened the first time around? 19 years ago, construction on the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa, began. The length of the entire building is just shy of a mile. It was as expensive as it was admirable, but at the end of the day, the UAE could sit back, kick their feet up, and pat themselves on the back for creating something no one could replicate. Cut to 2013, and construction on the Jeddah Tower began. Previously, the Kingdom Tower, this building would supersede the Burj Khalifa by 172 meters. Adrian Smith, the architect who designed the Burj Khalifa, envisioned the Jeddah Tower to hover at an impressive height of 3,281 feet. Simply, the world's first one kilometer long building. That was 10 years ago, but the Burj Khalifa is still the world's tallest building. How come? Well, construction on the Jeddah Tower actually stopped once it was a third done. For a decade, the Jeddah Tower stood at only about 1,000 feet tall and not nearly as tall as any of the world's massive buildings. The crowned prince swore he'd be the one to finish the project in his reign. In September 2023, it was announced that work on the Jeddah Tower would officially restart. What does the Jeddah Tower represent? It has to mean something to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Why else would they undertake such a massive project? Jeddah is well regarded as the commercial hub of the Middle Eastern nation. It's the country's most developed focal point. The whole project is threefold. That is, there are three developmental phases planned out by Jeddah Economic City. The first one's obvious, the construction of the tower. Next comes surrounding infrastructure. The third phase hasn't been revealed yet, but it's widely speculated that JC intends to use the site as a focal point within Jeddah for tourism and economic development. You might be wondering why construction of the most expensive project started before everything else. Well, it was actually a calculated decision. The project has been heavily endorsed by Prince Al-Walid bin Talal. He's one of the richest men in Saudi Arabia, actually the whole world. According to him, showing the world that the people of Saudi Arabia could finish constructing a tower that reaches monumental heights, figuratively and literally, it'll motivate companies to start their business operations within the Middle Eastern country. The journey wasn't easy. A series of challenges were faced during construction. The first challenge, arguably, started way before JEC broke ground on the project. It's obvious that the Jeddah Tower is an ambitious project. No other construction team has ever managed to create a skyscraper that stands over a kilometre tall. Even with Adrian Smith at the helm of the project, the project still required oversight from experts belonging to different fields to even get things running. Skanska, a Swedish firm, offered to lend a pair of fresh eyes for the project, and so did Samsung. They determined that while it was a difficult project to achieve, the Jeddah Tower could still be done. Even with the go-ahead from multiple experts, the truth is that the success of the project couldn't be determined until after construction had gone at least halfway. Construction of a skyscraper poses certain risks, and the structural integrity of one is always in question. In the case of the Burj Khalifa, China's Shanghai Tower, and now the Jeddah Tower, there's the risk of tremendous air pressure and the building's own weight on its foundation. That was when Adrian Smith came up with a brilliant idea, a tripod-shaped design. In practice, this meant that the entire weight of the Jeddah Tower would be supported by a Y-shaped base, which would help ensure its structural integrity as well as minimize costs by lowering construction time and material expenses. This might have tackled one problem, but there were several more. The Empire State Building required groundwork to reach depths of 17 meters before work on the actual foundation of the building could begin. 
This was to ensure enough support for such a massive project. A better example in this case would be the Burj Khalifa, which actually required teams to reach depths of 55 meters. Obviously, the Jeddah Tower would need to reach depths even further. The work was tedious and costly, but was achieved by integrating newer and improved construction methods. Construction of ambitious projects such as the Jeddah Tower is never smooth sailing. However, the biggest challenge wasn't cost or labor related, but the arrest of one of the most powerful men in the kingdom. Bakr bin Laden was arrested as part of a 2017 anti-corruption purge. One of the very first things Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman did after coming into power was to set up an anti-corruption committee. The ambitious and authoritarian ruler of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia promised to rid the Middle Eastern nation of corruption and start a new era in Saudi Arabia's history by any means necessary. Of the many out of favor royals who were arrested without warrants and held in unknown detention centers, one was Bakr bin Laden. The Saudi Bin Laden Group is one of the world's largest construction groups headquartered in Saudi Arabia, and Bakr bin Laden happened to be its majority stakeholder. The 2017 Saudi purge was met with criticism for the simple fact that no one knew of the charges levied against the people who were detained besides Mohammed bin Salman himself. However, many people believed that Bakr's arrest had something to do with the fact that he refused to go public with the Bin Laden group and have their stats made public knowledge on the Saudi Arabian Stock Exchange. Bakr's arrest kick-started a chain of events that led to construction on the Jeddah Towers being halted. A Saudi government-owned entity took up a 36% share in the Bin Laden group. The COVID-19 pandemic hit. Several payrolls were missed. Laborers refused to continue work on the project and the cost of construction materials skyrocketed. Eventually, it was decided that work on the project would be halted indefinitely till a solution came up. It did come up. Several years later, though, an MBS broke ground on the Jeddah Tower once again in 2023. Rejuvenated interest in the construction also came with newer and more improved features. Besides just being the tallest building in the world, Jeddah Tower plans to stand out as the most advanced one too. The Jeddah Tower isn't just for show either. This multi-use building is set to double as a hotel, residential tower, shopping center, as well as host office buildings and whatever else falls in between. The use of the building has been left open because the Jeddah Tower is supposed to be a symbol of Saudi Arabia's advancement. JC has planned the project to tower 167 floors and cover an area of 530,000 square feet. Seven floors will be dedicated to a luxury hotel, 11 to 121 luxury apartments, and seven for office space. Environmental Systems Design, consultants for the project, emphasized its integral role in optimizing energy efficiency and mitigating stack effect issues. ESD collaborated closely with architects and engineers during planning, focusing on building configuration, orientation, and design to minimize environmental impact. The three-legged Kingdom Tower strategically avoids harsh sunlight, and ESD worked on high-performance elements, addressing solar gains. Wind and airflow studies were conducted to optimize system operations and counteract stack effects in different climates. Additionally, the tower will utilize condensate water for irrigation, employ water-efficient fixtures, and prioritize sustainability throughout the project. The only thing they're not willing to cut costs on is the observation deck, which, besides the height of the tower, is expected to be one of Jeddah Tower's most spectacular features. The deck will be placed once 600 meters worth of construction on the tower is complete. The tower will also, obviously, be fitted with a state-of-the-art elevator system with each elevator reaching speeds of over 10 meters per second. What's also interesting is that for the uppermost section of the tower, approximately 350 meters of it, the entire section will be made of steel. The fact is that even the most advanced concrete pumps can only go up to 250 bars and pump concrete up to 500 yards. So, to use what they had, 
construction teams decided to relegate the tower's uppermost section to an ornamental steel structure that's more decorative than anything else. What was the cost of the phenomenal project? Obviously, the planned construction wasn't going to be cheap. Developers urged construction teams to minimize costs by any means necessary. This included making use of regular concrete in place of super strength concrete. Construction crews of 100 men each have begun working on the project in shifts that come up to 24 hours a day, six days a week. In other words, work on the Jeddah Towers never stops. All of this comes together for a whopping $1.2 billion. That's just for the tower itself, by the way. In the second phase of development, JEC plans on constructing an entire city around the Jeddah Tower, which will drive up costs to $500 billion. To put this into context, that's double the net worth of Elon Musk, the world's richest man who has what seems like a modest $246 billion in comparison. That was everything to know about the Jeddah Tower. Comment down below what you think about Saudi Arabia's passion project. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more.